Amen. Good morning, everyone. <coughs> Sometimes I look at freedom that we have, seem like we've been better off without it. <laughs> so I see, you know, people are looking at ladies. Yesterday I was out with red hair, pink hair, and no hair. But that's what freedom brought us. But if if we don't take our freedom and walk with Jesus Christ, it's terrible. Right. Amen. We're going to read this morning from Psalm 65. Okay. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful and thankful. That which you have given us, Father, let us receive it with gladness and thanksgiving in our heart. Father, let us walk forth in the freedom that you have and not the things of this world. Lord, for sin is grateful, is great, Lord, throughout this world, destroying all that it can conquer. But Lord, if we just yield unto you, we will not be a part of it. Father, so give us strength and guide us each day. Lord, as you remember those this morning in the Sunday school classes and bless them, Father, all in a special way. Lord Jesus, we love you and we thank you. Just remember Brother Dale, Father, and touch him. Lord, in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're going to read Psalm 65. Praise wait for thee, O God, in Zion, and unto thee shall thy vow be performed. Iniquities prevail against me as for our transgressions. Thou shalt purge them away. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the deliverance of thy house, even of thy holy temple. By terrible things in righteousness <laughs> will thou answer us. O God of our salvation, who are the confidence of our of all ends of the earth, and of them that are far off upon the sea. Which stilleth the noise of the sea and the noise of thy waves, and the trembling of thy people. <laughs> Thou visit the earth and watered it. Thou greatly enrich it with the river of God, which is full of water. Thou prepares them corn when thou hast so provided for it. Thou waterest the riches thereof abundantly. Thou settlest the furrows thereof. Thou makest the salt the showers. Thou blessest the swimming thereof. Thou crownest the year with the goodness, and thy paths drop fatness. They drop upon the pastures of the wilderness, and look the hills of the forest on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks, and the valleys also covered over corn, with shout for joy, and they also sing. Amen. God bless you. Be seated. Thank you. <coughs> Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you Yes, I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Do you love me? Pour out your, your power, power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. High and lifted up, shining in the light of your Pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. Amen. Holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. Yes, you're holy, holy, holy. 
see you. Amen and amen. Just take a look around. You might find him, right? Good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. If you'd like to turn in your scriptures, turn where we've been reading in Revelation 3. And then we'll go to 2 Peter 1. Good to see everybody. We're good to see our visitors. They're coming up and they're with us today and fellowshipping. Some of Brother Anderson's Sister Anna's crowd. We had a good time last night in the Bible study. We had more visitors just about it. And we did have our own people, you know, to uh, fellowship and had a good time in doing that together in the Bible study. But we say to you, welcome. Now, some of you are not visitors because you've been here before, and you know how we do that. We say, if you come one time, you're a visitor, two times you're part of us. So that just makes it to be uh, the whole point, right? Good to have everybody or some back, like Brother Dick and them from vacation. Others, now there's a good many missing today uh, that are gone to youth camps and things. So remember each one of them, you know, the, the families and the things that they'll all get a, uh, a safe trip back and everything will be all right. So remember that. Okay, now the fellowship meeting will be the third Saturday of this month. It will be at Brother Pageants. So remember that the third Saturday. They start at 3.30. We'll leave here about at least by 12.30 to be able to be there. So if you want to ride this, it's a very short one this time, but still the time we stop and eat, it ties up. And if you don't stop and eat, you're going to have to eat before you get started. So we generally always try to uh, get everything set up. We'll stop in Gainesville somewhere and get about to eat. All right, that's on the third Saturday. So remember that, you know. Uh, pray that the Lord would bless each one and guide us all in his love. All right. Uh, we thank God for this tomorrow being the 4th of July, being Independence Day. We thank God for that, that we... To, at this time, still have our independence and thanking God for the freedom that we do have. It may be fast being taken from us, but it, it, we still have a lot more than most of the world has. So we thank God for that, you know, and all that's been done to make it all, all the lives that's been given to bring us to an Independence Day. But see, t that's tomorrow because that will be our 4th of July. And we started here July the 4th, 1971 in the services here at the church. So that means a lot to us about Independence Day. But just remember, Independence Day is the day you're born again. That's the independence that we want. That's a dependence upon him to make you and I to be the children of God. And that's, that's the great part of it, right? So we thank God for him allowing us to have the time and to hear the word and, and receive all of those things. Uh, I guess that's all the announcements. Anything else? Remember, the, the things are downstairs for the uh, announcement in October when we're going on the train ride. So we hope everybody will, will sign up and be ready to go and, and everything, and we can go up and ride through the mountains and just have a good time together as fellowshipping as the body of Christ, all right? Now, uh, okay, I guess that's all. I got a whole bunch written down anyway, so maybe I've announced enough anyway. So the Lord willing, Brother Aaron will be ministering this coming Wednesday. So remember that and keep all in your prayers. Father, we thank you for this day, Lord, because we can this day enjoy our freedom in Jesus Christ. We know tomorrow is our natural holiday for the land and things, and people will be celebrating and all kind of things of our Independence Day. But today is the day of salvation, so we thank you for that, and we love you, and we just ask that you would bless each one. Remember the sick among us. We know that there's many, many sicknesses that are there, Lord. Remember each one, and these old flu bugs coming around and all the different things. And we thank you, Lord. We ask you to just guide each and every one of us. And Lord, most of all, forgive our sins. Cover us by thy blood that we may walk in you. Because that is the only way we can think about anything in ourselves to be worth anything is what you've made us. And we love you and we thank you. Have your way now and guide us and keep us. We love you, Father, and thank you for all things in Jesus' name.
Amen. Ray and Kathy made it back from their 35th honeymoon. Uh, how much? 60th. 60th. Oh, I didn't know y'all was that old. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> it was good. All right, Revelation 3.14 and then Second Peter, okay. And unto the angel of the church of the lady of sins write, these things saith the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. And like I say, then if he was the beginning, Brother Brown said, we are the continuation of that creation. All right. So now we go over here in Peter to think about this new creation that we are in Christ Jesus. And watch now where Peter is addressing this. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, who to them that have obtained like precious faith. So whatever Peter had, these people have that. This is not addressed to the world, right? The world cannot be partakers of God's divine nature. The world needs to be born again. You got to do that first. And that's what he's saying. These are to people that are born again. This is not written to just anybody. All right. That have obtained like precious faith were with us through the righteousness of God and our savior, Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord. Now watch him. According as his divine power hath given unto all us all things that pertain unto life. Now he's given, it's there free. Li unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Now we're called to this position, right? See? Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And Brother Branham on the message of the position in Christ, he said, after we come into the body of Christ, then he expects us to have his divine nature. All right. Now watch him. And beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith, virtue into virtue, knowledge into knowledge, temperance into temperance, patience into patience, godliness into godliness, brotherly kindness into brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make ye that she shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. The Lord add his blessing to the reading of the word. Now, to not back up a whole lot, but yet to, um, you know, not carry on and go on through. Um, to our visitors, a good many are here today. And like I said, we had almost as many last night of visitors in the Bible study. And I hope they had a good time. And, and us just because that's the Bible study to us is you sitting around and just fellowshipping and asking questions and commenting and, and that way. And, you know, your sisters, you have just as much right there to question and talk about as us brothers. Cause it's just a fellowship time to be able to. Uh, talk about these things. And a lot of times uh, it does relate over into um, the message that we're preaching and the things. So then that's, that's good. And if you want a copy of that, then it is available to where that you must request it from brother Joe or one to other of them, brother Richard and them, and they'll make uh, you a copy of the Bible study that you can hear us as we discuss things you know, and it gets kind of comical sometimes and, and all, and we just have a good time because I don't see why we can't do that to fellowship and to do and all. But if you want that also too, now last Sun, last Wednesday's message, you cannot pull it up at this time on the video. It, it was something happened and they're working, trying to make sure that it has happened one time before that we lose the video part. We still have the audio. It is there, but we don't have the video part of it. And they're trying to work upon uh, a system to where we'll have two systems because that's really what we have back here. See in the back, we have a thing set up to copy ever service on the audio that's separate from the internet to where that we make sure that we have a copy 
of the services. Now, I, I've done that for years because I want you to do, and if anybody on the Internet system desires any of these things, go on the Internet, and you'll see that they're there from about 2002 on down to now, and you can check out to see whether I've changed my doctrine or whatever I've tried to teach to you for all of those years. They're available. Whatever you want to do with them, you can listen. But I have them there for another purpose, too. You come up and say, Brother Dale, you said so-and-so. I said, well, let's go get the tape. You know, so you say, well, I heard you say it. Okay, let's go play the tape. If I said it, I'd be glad to apologize, you know. But let's go play the tape. Well, you know what? I've never had to play the tape yet. Because I guess anybody figures if you're stern enough to say, let's play the tape, that, you know, you pretty well know where you're standing. So, you know, that don't make us right. That just makes us safe. I like to be safe about everything to keep everything in order. And then that way you can check out to see if I've changed my doctrine. You know, and, and see what you want to because it's there available in all of the years. Because we just, not that we're trying to, uh, pastor anything, but just open it up to where that if anybody wants to listen, you're welcome to listen. Yeah. All right. At least then you'll know what I believe. Now, if you're honest and think about it, if you ask some of your pastors before you came here, you ask them what they believe and you generally didn't get a good answer because a lot of them, but this, you know, uh, most preachers won't tell you what they believe. Right. Well, that's one thing I do, now, right or wrong, good or bad. I'll tell you what I believe. And you say, well, Brother Dale, like one brother one time wanted to question me in a minister's meeting we were having, and it was designed for that to try to jump me. And I, I, I knew about it, knew it beforehand, and Nana knew about it, Nanny did, and Anna even knew about it. And they both told me, said, they're trying to trap you. I said, well, I'll give you my word that I will not say nothing. And I said, I'll give you my word right now that I know what their plans are. They were planning on to attack me on a doctrinal issue. And I said, I won't answer them. So the brothers kept on, kept on at the meeting that day to try to get me to, to do. And I said, listen, brothers, I just have to repeat the same thing I've already said. You know, you know what I've already taught. And if you want to know what I already taught, it's there. And, and there's no need of me going over it again because I've always taught it this way. Well, that pretty well put a stop to the, to the point. But, you know, I just like to be that way. I think it ought to be. I thank God for the fact that we live in the day and the time and the age and the situation. I thank God that he sent a prophet to America because what if he'd have sent him to some of these other foreign countries? There would have been no ability to capture the message they would have been no ability to do anything. You would have just had word of mouth things or whatever was written. But look what we have. We have the ability to pull up everything the prophet taught from like 47, you know, up to the end and, and all like that. And thank God for that. We can, you know, come to that point. And that's why I do like I'm doing now. See, there is an argument among the people of the message to the visitors that we're doing. There's an argument among the believers of the message over this little point called the stature of a perfect man, Second Peter. Some say, well, I got all of this when I was born again. I have all of these things. They, I got them when I was born again. The other group says we don't have them yet. Well, why not just somewhere get in the middle and be able to believe all the word of God? There's quotes for this. There's quotes for that. But what about a reality in our hearts and lives? We read it, and Peter said, add to your faith virtue knowledge. Well, if you already had it, then why was he writing for them to receive it? All right, that brings it into ruin. But we are not to the position as a body hold of the church of Jesus Christ, maybe to where the faith of the fathers were. I'll agree with that. So then that puts these quotes some right and this right but bring it in the middle of the road and bring it to our lives and situation of where we're at. All right. See, then we can establish then the things because as we went through this so far coming up through this, we're over to brotherly kindness now. And we spent quite a time with the message where brother Brandon would say like 
paragraph 142, 143 of the stature of a perfect man. He said, have faith and be born again. He said, you're only laying the foundation. Well, you can look at the pyramid and you can see the things and you say, have faith and be born again. See, like I said, some believe that we get all of this when we're, the day we're born again as newborn babies. Well, why you want to grow in grace and knowledge, you know, to come and in your prophets when it said it, I didn't. He said the Holy Ghost, the headstone had not come yet. Well, you say, well, we've got everything just like the apostles. Well, I'll go along with you if you'll divide the day of Pentecost. Because on the day of Pentecost, you've got 120 that had been tutored. When they received the Holy Ghost, it put them as what we call the faith of the fathers. And Brother Brown said they had these virtues, but they didn't have the headstone. Okay. You say, well, you mean they didn't have the headstone back there? No. That's what your prophet said. I didn't make those statements. Well, I, I think they had the headstone. I think Paul had it. Well, no, I didn't answer that. Brother Branham's one that said it. See, and opinions is, is, is something to talk about, but it's not truth. All right. But see, he says, have faith and be born again. He said, you're only laying the foundation. Then he goes on to paragraph 176, 178. Read the message, Statue of a Perfect Man. He said, these are the things that God expects for us to add. There's these things. Yep. All right. So now it's simple. If we are to add them, we didn't have them. That's plain language. I, I like to make things blunt. You know, and you well, who are you? Well, I'm me. Who are you? Like we were talking about last night. A question was asked about uh, the uh, standing at the judgment seat of Christ. Well, we had to express the message part of it because, you see, we'd say, the Bible says, well, all stand at the judgment seat of Christ. All right, now, according to the Bible and according to the prophet, the bride doesn't stand before the white throne judgment, Right? So there must be another judgment. That's not interpreting something. That's in plain sense. Are you going to put everybody to white throne? See? If you do, then you're contrary to the Bible. Because you're not perfect, see? Because you'd have to stand at the white throne for something to happen. And your prophet emphatically states over and over, the bride does not stand at the white throne judgment. She sets on the judgment according to the Bible with him judging others. See, that to me is sensible then. Amen. Then when you say, I, you know, just to the visitor's point, see, when you say, well, I, I've I got all these when I was born again. Well, what does it mean to add? See? You say, I got it. I got it just like the disciples. Like I said, 120 received it because of the word they heard. 3,000 received it, and that put them at faith Amen. because they were not tutored by the word. Right. Right. Well, now, that's simple to me. Yes. You know, and, and, and that answers a lot of the questions of why we're here or what this. Like we were talking about last night. Then that answers the question of what, why we're here 50 years after the prophet's gone. Evidently, according to the prophet, there was only thing, one thing holding off the coming of the Lord. And he said it was the readiness of the bride. So evidently, that's our problem. And that's the only thing that I'm trying to say now is we need these virtues. Peter spoke of it, and we need them. We have to have them. Hmm? It's not a choice of saying, well, we might could do this. Might, no. But remember how we've taught it to you, too, that you can't say, well, okay, and there's a doctrine in the message that people say, we are born again right up here where it says, Lady of Seal. Does that put us right there, brotherly kindness? Well, that didn't. Uh, I don't see how you can say we're born in a certain age that makes us that. No. See, you got to get it in the right order to bringing it to a point. All right. Now then bringing it down, what was situation we've come down through is you add to your faith. See, faith is not an ad. We'll get to the mathematical calculations later of the nine things that you see. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're looking at the pyramid. Right. But there's only seven ads, your prophet said. Right. So, all right. right. He said only seven church ages. All right. right. See, we'll get to those as we go along in the message. But to just back up enough to people to understand what we're doing, you see, then you must add to your faith. Right. Faith is not an ad, that's a birth. A baby is born a baby, but it does not have any virtues. It is simply a baby. It grows into the virtues of life in the natural. So as a Christian is born again as a baby, and you say, well, I've got this or I've got that. You can have those things and not even be born again. Remember, that's in blasphemous names and stature of perfect man that you can have a portion of these things and not even born again at all. Right. All right. But you see, then it takes the new birth to bring it. Amen. And then when it, when you get that new birth, now you're in the place to grow. Right. So you add to your faith, virtue to virtue, knowledge. We see what we think we just take, add to your faith, knowledge. You remember how we've been covering that? You say, well, I'll just, I, I don't need to worry about these other things. I'll just add knowledge and then I'll add godliness and, and I, I might play around with a brotherly kind of stuff. No. Remember, you don't go up a ladder two or three rungs. You're going to slip and fall. You go up the ladder one rung at a time. You go up the Christian ladder one layer or rung or what do you want to call it at the time. The prophet said, you try to add brotherly kindness. He said, and he said, if these are not right here, he said, it'll all crumble. That's in stature of perfect man. He said, it'll all crumble. Why? Because it's not correct back behind. But if you build everything according to each one in its place, Amen. see, that's right. then God doesn't require us to have knowledge. And that's not head knowledge. That's, not that's Holy Ghost knowledge. He doesn't require that until you have virtue. Amen. What is virtue? Not a virgin life, the prophet covers it. It's the fact of Christ living in us to make us what we have need of being for the time. Then you add brotherly kind, I mean, you add knowledge to that. And see, then you come under knowledge before you have required to have temperance. Well, bless God, when I got born again, I ain't had no temper since then. Yeah. You just hang around me a little while and you'll find out. That, you know, I'll find a way to tell whether that temperance is right or not. Because that's what the Bible said about trying of your faith worketh patience. All right. Trying of your revelation. All right. But get the point. See, you don't get this and then jump way up here. Everybody understand? A baby doesn't go from year one. And you take it down, it's the Euro, you take it down to the school and said, now, September when it starts, we're going to put this baby in. Uh, we're going to bypass the, the kindergarten because they don't need it. We're going to put them in the first. Well, let's don't put them in the first. Let's put them about third grade. Boy, that's really good. It's one year old. You say, you're silly. No, that's the way Christian life, that's the way people explain the Christian life. When you're born again, the Bible calls it an earnest, a baby to desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. All right. So is it with the stature of a perfect man? See, to grow in it. All right. And the prophet says it uh, on the message. Let's see. Uh, looking under Jesus, he said, all you got to do is just keep drinking in and said, these things will be pushed out. Just keep inhaling the word. As you take the word, it'll push out the things we have need of. Right? But everybody with me now? You don't have to, you don't try to jump the rung and go to another. Because if you try to go to, to temperance without having knowledge, then you think temperance means don't drink alcohol. And the prophet says that's not what it means in this case. He said it's that temper you have. Blasphemous names, he said, it's that ungodly, uncontrollable temper you have. Just remember how we went through. What is the one member of the body that has never been able to be controlled? 
the tongue. Right? You remember what Jack Cole, that lady said, 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 my tongue is my problem. He said, I want to lay it on the altar. He said, ma'am, he said, this pulpit's only 14 feet. He said, there ain't enough room. Well, he was telling the truth, wasn't he? See, that's the thing. It's not been controlled by mankind. All right? Because it's the problem with us is that. All right. Now, so then we're expected then as we come up, we're expected then as we grow, these are supposed to be brought into existence. And remember when we got to godliness, you remember that? We got to godliness and Brother Branham says what? He said, you come all this way. You come all the way up to here before God expects you to be godly. Then we went through, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Well, there ain't none of us perfect. And that's what I kept emphasizing the other day. We say, there ain't none of us perfect. We're just forgiven. You see that on the tag, don't you? And you say, oh, that's a great statement. Is that a great statement or is that stupidity? Come on. If you're forgiven, it means it's wiped out, right? It's in the sea of God's forgetfulness if you're forgiven. Well, then, if you're forgiven, you're not guilty. If you're not guilty, you're perfect. The only way to be perfect is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Right? But if we don't confess what he says... Then we went through it there at the point of godliness. The brother Brown said, you come all this way. He said, now he expects you to be like God. Well, I was like God down here at the bottom. I remember when it, amen. But there's more to the story. Remember what we were talking about? To be like God. Do you know that the Bible says that people have a form of godliness and deny the power thereof. That's Second Timothy uh, 3 and 5, I guess. To have a form of godliness. What is a form of godliness but not having the power thereof? And the situation exists there. These are ones that go about doing this, creeping the houses. They do it. They lead them captive, silly women, all like that. That's certainly not God kind of godliness, is it? But remember how we were bringing out? You say, well, they have a form of godliness, the kind old priest did. You could not condemn the kind old priest of anything. Jesus never condemned him of anything. Did, did Jesus tell Nicodemus any of his faults? Am I right now? He didn't tell Nicodemus any faults he had. Why? Because he didn't have any. His only fault was that he needed to be born again. Right? See, then that way you can look at it and see that Jesus was not condemning him for his life because his life was right. See, you can have a form of godliness. You can act like God. You can be forgiven. I mean, forgive people and be great and have a great nature about you and all kind of thing. And you look at the kind old priest and look how great he was. You know, but then Jesus comes along, plats a rope together, runs him out of the temple. But just remember, now he was God. Right? You say, well, the nature of God wasn't displayed that day. That was the nature of a man. No, that was the nature of God. Because he said, you make my house a den of thieves. Let me set, quote Brother Branham. Do you know what he become by doing that? You know what Brother Branham said? That Jesus become what he done? A deacon. You need that quote? He said he become a deacon. You know why? Because he, he's supposed to take care of everything. Doing his office and time. All right. You see, the message has given us the answers to a lot of the questions we thought about. All right? And what about a God that is so great of a God that could utterly destroy a whole nation? 
men, women, children, babies and everything. Wipe them out. Well, yet he's God. Now who can condemn him? But to our eyes, the kind old priest was a better guy. He had more godliness the way we think than Jesus had. Right? But that won't work. See, his godliness was without power, without the love of God, without the strength of God, without the virtue of God. He had natural virtue. Blasphemous name says you can have it. Christ, uh, Statue of Perfect Man says you can have natural virtues and things. All right. But we need it with God. In other words, we don't need a knowledge until we first get a virtue. Then we need knowledge. All right. Well, but I don't want to. I'm coming up this way. Come on, quit playing games. You can play games and say, when a baby's born, it's got everything that it'll ever have. Amen. But it ain't grown enough to use it. Amen. All right. So don't play with the games with me of saying, well, when I got born again, I had these things in a potential. Okay. We'll go along with you. If you'll go along with me on one thing, a potential is not a real thing. If a potential is never developed into a full thing, it is not real. Uh, so we don't play with words. We take it straight and try to comprehend what is being said. Uh, so we come and the prophet said, we come all the way up here. Now he's expecting us to be perfect. You remember that? Matthew five forty eight. be therefore perfect. Oh, but it's none of us perfect. We're just forgiven. You see, that's carnal mankind. Come on, if you're forgiven, like I said, I talked about Brother Collie. I said, now, Brother Collie, I could say, Brother Collie robbed a bank today. Well, he didn't rob the bank. He's perfect. He ain't guilty. He's perfect. Perfect doesn't just mean you done it and then are forgiven. Come on, we got the message. Go into invisible union on the message of justification. Right. Come on. And what does he say on the invisible union of justification? You start off chopping off your pie sin. That's fine. But after a while, it comes to what? He says, though you never done it. That's when he puts in the sea of forgiven. But what about the life part? We don't study that part of the future of the invisible union. Go on to where he said the real you never did do it. Now, who's the real you? The God that's living in you is the real you. Right? So that's why a believer in a born again believer is perfectly, totally sinless. That don't mean we don't do wrong. We do that every day because that's the human elements. But inside of us is eternal life. And that's what he's doing inside of us now, adding the word to push out, to bring these virtues into being. All right. Now, so we're up to that point of thinking and see, I want to drop back, though, because I want you to think on these things. And I'll try to run through them in a hurry. And we don't have to read them, but we'll, if they throw them up, then you'll be able to read it. On blasphemous names, paragraph 135, Brother Branham says, These virtues, all right, without the gifts of those, but those gifts of God, without these virtues in them, make a stumble block to the unbeliever. Well, if gifts, see, we want the gifts without the giver. That's the next quote. See, that's on debate on tongue. That we want to have gifts without the giver. And that's what Pentecost, not throwing off on them, that's what they come up with was gifts. And that's what gets in the way. See, a gift will get in your way. Brother Donnie can tell you about a man that at his work. He's been healed of different things. But now how are you going to tell him he's a sinner? He's going to tell you all of the healing that happened to him. And he's going to look at you and say, you ever been healed? He's going to throw it right in your face. Because that's a gift. 
See, gifts are the worst thing in the world to people. Because how are you going to condemn somebody with a gift? Come on, folks. Get serious. Gifts and callings, the Bible said, is what? Without repentance. Outside of repentance. You don't repent to get a gift. You're born with a gift. I was. I was born with a gift to gab. It took 20 years to get that out. Because in my early life, I was the most shameful person you ever seen. When you were talking to me, I was, you've, you've seen them, right? You talk to some people there. They can look at you a little. Well, because they're embarrassed. And that's the way I was. See? But then God got a hold of that and he changed it. Whether you want to call it a gift of gab, that's all right. There's no problem. It works anyway. So who's worried about it? But see, gifts and callings are without repentance. You can have all of those gifts and still not be right. Now, here's the one that I quote a lot. So to go ahead with number four, let's see. Yeah, let's read this one. Look at number four, which is the harvest time preached in 1964. Watch him. Now watch this point and read it real careful. Notice if Satan fails here, in other words, he's explaining Satan trying to get you. Okay, read it. Notice if Satan fails here, then he'll try his second scheme on you. And read it. Get you to disbelieve the word. Right? If he can get you that way, disbelieve the word. Go to the seminary. If that don't work, then watch him. He'll try the next a scheme. If he can't get you off the word by sending you to school, sending you to your denominational, this, that, and the other, he goes to the secondary. Now watch him, what it is. He'll try the next, a scheme. Now here is where you want to be real careful. And just sit for another five minutes on this part, if you will. Then he makes you a supernatural offer. Now Satan can't get you off the word and you stay with it. He'll offer you a supernatural offer. Now, that's what your prophet is saying now. I'm going to come back to all this just before closing. If he can't tempt you away from the word, no, I'm going to stay with the word. Then he'll give you a supernatural offer. And we're talking about Satan. Right? right? Look what he said. He said, I'll tell you what. You remember this is what happened to Jesus. Fall down, jump down, dangle the body up, lest you hurt you, you know, and all of the time. Remember that was in Satan is in temptation. I'll tell you what. You get up here and dive off the temple and bring back up. See, show the people that you can do something supernatural. And that was the temptation of the Lord Jesus. Right? Boy, he got them there. Now watch this. This is it. Watch. When you get to the end where this temptation come, maybe he might let some of you speak in tongues. Think you got it. Right? Now watch him. He's going to give you a supernatural offer. Right? Or he might even let you prophesy. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Though it not be with the word. Yep. See, because people don't care. Right? Look, I've seen people stand up and prophesy was as contrary to the word as the east is from the west. But now you think you can tell that person that they're... No, nah, I forget it. See, it's a word that you live by. Look, them supernatural gifts. Everybody awake? Hiya, hiya. Supernatural gifts. Satan can just hand them out by the handful. Satan. He said, certainly, that don't mean one thing. 
Yeah, but brother so-and-so, he's got a gift. Praise God. Gifts are in calling or without repentance. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. With this brother, but he's got a gift to do this out of the other. Praise God. I can relate a story that we were sitting in a certain place one time, and this man used his gift as a sister walked by. He used his gift, and he said so-and-so, right in front of everybody, which to me was very out, you know, uncalled for. He could approach her personally, but he made a statement. The sister came to me, and she said, Brother Dale, she said, what the brother said, he said, how come every time I see you, he said, I think of baby clothes. Well, what does that mean to an unwed girl? Especially a girl that's on up in age, maybe in her 30s, you know, maybe even older at that time. I don't know exactly, maybe younger, whatever she was. She wasn't married. We knew the whole story. The brother said, how come I, when I see you, I think of baby clothes? So the sister came to me later and she said, Brother Dale, she said, I want you to know one thing, that there ain't no problems. You know, she was right. She was virgin. She was right. She said, the only thing is I work at a baby clothes factory. Mm -hmm. All right. Now what am I going to do? Serious. I love the brother. Still no problems. Nothing whatsoever. Didn't condemn and didn't holler at him. I just went to him. This brother won't talk to you. I just remember the other night when you said that every time that girl went across in front of you, you saw baby clothes. He said, yeah. I said, brother, there's no problem. I said, she worked at a baby clothes factory. Well, I ain't denying his gift didn't pick up that fact. He picked up something he knew, something in relation. But he didn't have wisdom with his gifts. He was regardless of anything else. He said, you mean you would be willing to talk to somebody that's your elder? That was into the message and under Brother Ryan's ministry? At time, that you'd talk to him to tell him that he wasn't right? I don't see why you wouldn't. Are we going with seniority? You know, well, brother, so-and-so, you can't say nothing to him because he was ordained by the prophet. If he's wrong, he's wrong. What's the difference? Come on. You see, but we don't want it that way. Brother Brown said he'd be glad when the bride would stand up and say, you're not teaching it like, like Paul said it. Well, isn't it something in this day we ought to be able to stand up and say, you're not saying what Brother Branham said? I don't care who he is, who the person is. Wrong is wrong. But see, what is God doing? Satan can pass out supernatural gifts. You say, I don't understand that. Forget it, I don't either. But the prophet said it, and I believe it. Right? Because remember, he was the anointed cherub that stood beside the Lord. That's one thing you can always remember. He was those signs. He knew all about all of this. He was greater than in that extent than any, anybody there other than Michael. Michael was the only one that could control him and threw him out of heaven. See, all right. And see, Michael was Christ. All right. But you see, now I'm off of trying to help the visitors now down to us. So listen, all right. Satan can pass out supernatural gifts, but we think, well, we've got this and we got that. We do this thing. We do that. The gifts without the virtues. Or a stumble block. That's the way he said it. We always quote it stumbling block, but it says stumble block there. Okay. Just in case somebody on tape went, well, he didn't say that the way the prophet said it. Okay, I'll say it the way the prophet said it. Stumble block. What is a stumble block? Stumbling block. Mm -hmm. But listen, what about, would God allow these things to happen? Now remember, you have come up through virtue, Knowledge to know that God's word cannot be contradictory. Right. You know, he can't say something here and something over here. And then that would bring temperance, self-control upon us. Mm -hmm. And it would bring us to patience. Mm -hmm. To where Brother Brown said, patience with God. 
Not just patience with one another. He said patience with God. He said when God tells you so and so, he said you wait. Patience with God. You mean God would allow Satan to be able to deceive the people through gifts? Well, I just can't see a God like that. Boy, you, you just don't see God like I see him. I know that. Because when you talk about being, say, God, you talk about a lovey-dovey, granddaddy old guy that won't condemn us for being wrong and problems with it. He loves us so much. Yeah, but we're the bride of Jesus Christ. Amen. You remember the other week when I gave out those quotes where the prophet said, two times in our thus saith the Lord, there'd be a persecution. We know the bride doesn't go through tribulation. Come on, get that out. But he said there'd be a persecution. All right. Now, you said, but yeah, no, I'm not looking forward to it. I just know he said it. He said, keep your homes belong to the Catholic Church. I didn't make them things. Well, I don't, don't brother, I just don't think that God let his bride go through that. You sure would be in bad shape in the dark ages, wouldn't you? When he allowed women to stand and then rip the baby out of their stomach and throw it to the hogs. You sure wouldn't fit there too good. You better thank God you're here now. Come on. Brother Branham on the message, God of this evil age. This evil age is to prove to Satan. She is not like Eve. That she is not that type of a woman. She will be tried by his word, the bride, as Adam's bride was tried by the word. And Adam's bride believed every bit of the word, all but confused on one promise, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. See? But look, that's number six, drop back to five. We've heard this scripture, but do you read it like that? Deuteronomy 13. If there arise, now we, we, we quote the scripture that if a prophet comes and gives you a sign, you're supposed to believe the prophet, right? That's the scripture. I forgot what that one is, but that is a scripture. That's what God said about it. We're to believe that prophet because he gave the signs and the things. Thank God. But now look at this. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder. Now watch him. And the sign or wonder come to pass. In other words, he says, here I got 10 people laying in caskets. And when I speak it, they're going to raise from the dead. What are you going to do? Oh, that has to be of God. Read the rest of the scripture. And the sign or wonder come to pass. Whereof he spake unto thee, saying, let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. What is other gods? Trinities are right. Yeah, come on. We got trinities. We're taught. But what about the people of this message? Brother Brown said this, and Brother Brown said this, and we believe this, and we believe that. And he said, other gods. They made Brother Brown a God, right? Mm -hmm. Look what it says. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. Now, this is what I love, because look what God will do. Or that dreamer of dreams... For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Now that's Bible. He's going to allow things to happen. Forty-something years ago, I said, you think this is coming? But I said, one of these days, because Brother Brown, may I quote him? He said, it'll come to a date, the Methodists and Baptists and all of them are healing the sick. The direct quote, come on. They're healing the sick. What are you going to do? You go right over there. And today you'll probably be some miracle happen in that church right across there. Well, I guess we don't have them done because we ain't got what they got. We're going over there. That's no problem. That's no trouble. Go where? What do you think? I'm not trying to run nobody out. I'm just telling the truth. Well, see, if he takes you to another God, 
another denomination or another idea or opinion. Right. And it says that God allowed these to come among you to prove you. Amen. Have you ever noticed this quote? Now, we know God is all-knowing God, right? He knows everything before the world ever began, all that. But why would Brother Brown make this statement? He said he tried Moses. Watch him. He said because he didn't want to get down to the Red Sea and find out he had the wrong man. That's a paraphrase, but it's very, very close. You mean God didn't know Moses would do? Why did he try Moses? To let Moses find out who he was. Why is he trying us? Not to prove Brother Branham was right. No, no. Eh? But to see whether we'll take it or not. Yeah, right. 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 Yeah. Well, that brother, they, remember, he gave you two things. If he won't fall off the word, you remember the quote back up above? If you won't go off the word, what will he do? He'll send you a supernatural offer. Right. Well, Brother Dale. Right. Brother called me one time. He had backslid. He was a preacher. And he called me. He said, Brother Dale, I don't understand it. He said, I know I'm backslid. That's what he said. He said, I know I'm backslid. I'm not living right. He said, I get sermons just like I did when I was serving the Lord. He said, why would that work like that? I said, because the Bible says gifts and callings are without repentance. I said, then he'll give you, if the gift is there, the gift will work. You say, well, you mean God would be that way? Now, what are you bringing all this out about, Brother Dale? I'm bringing it out for the basis of one thing. Brother Brown said we come all the way up to godliness before we've got to be like God. We come all the way up to godliness before he expects us to be perfect. That's what your prophet said now. It's in the statue of perfect man. So now when we come to brotherly kindness in a minute, think about it. He's let us come all this way before he requires brotherly kindness. Now come on, get to the point. What does he say? The prophet said we come all this way before he requires that we be perfect. What is he talking about? Your prophet always taught that the new birth makes you just as perfect as God is. Amen. 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 Eternal life in your soul makes you just as perfect. Why? Because it is God. That's right. But now he requires us to come to perfection. You remember what we brought out in definitions of the word? Perfection. What? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your father in heaven. Perfect means complete in a full age. Just the same as Paul saying in Hebrews 6 and 1. He just got 2 and 5 declaring that babies need milk, but those that are, are of, do eat meat are of those of strong because they've exercised their, their faith, they're doing. And then he declares it in chapter 6, 1 and said, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of dead works and of eternal judgment. Was Paul saying we're going to leave all of these things? No. Come on, what kind of a carnal mind have you got? He was saying put these things in order. Get it settled that there's no judgment for the bride. But get it settled that there can be a judgment to the world. And that judgment is eternal because God made the judgment and you can't change the judgment once it's made. So then it's right, eternal judgments and baptisms and that. Why don't we read the Bible? So you come all the way up, statue of a perfect man, you come all the way up to godliness, then you're required to be perfect. Paul is explaining the same thing. Therefore, leaving the principle of the doctrine of God, let us go on to perfection. What? Perfection, perfect means a full grown or age. Why is it, as we were talking about last night, why is it in Hebrews 1140, they without us cannot be made what? Perfect. What does that mean? Are we going to get them up and preach something to them? No. 
We're going to bring them to a full age. Because in the resurrection and rapture, they're going to be to a full age. Not at everybody's we talking about life now. Everybody won't be the same, no, because it's meant to be that way. But you'll bring them to a completion. Why? Because the Holy Ghost that started in them by a new birth brings you to a completion through the bride in the end time. All right? So then, and what is it in brotherly kindness? Me? The prophet said on what? Let's see. Uh, the statue of perfect man, 341. He said, these fellers are not required what these fellers are required. These fellers are not required what these fellers are required. Why? Because Luther met his and took it and stopped on that of the just shall live by faith. He's not required to come to a change of the body. But you and I are. That's why they're waiting on you and I. And Brother Brown said, God's waiting on you and I. So let's don't blame God. Well, God just ain't never give that to me. Have you made yourself available? Well, I ain't going out there. I might get confused. Don't worry about it, honey. You already are. Yeah, but if I went out there and listened to Brother Dale, I might get confused. Honey, you already are confused. Where would the truth confuse anybody? Yeah, but he is so deep to he this, that, or the other. I wish you could understand what being deep is. Okay. You know that being deep is the shallowest thing that's ever been in the world. That's my definition of deep. Brother Branham was very deep. You know what? He was the most shallow man that I've ever seen as he could explain the Bible. Right. Not that he was shallow in that he didn't have anything. No, but he took all he had and brought it to a place to where he could talk our language. Is that not what the scripture says about Jesus? That the common people heard him gladly. Why? Not because he could explain the vials, the plagues, the thunders, the this, that, or the other, but because he could bring the gospel down to a simple language that it could be comprehended. What are we supposed to be? Hmm? Go ahead to number nine. We'll pick this up. And look what he says. Because we're going to come down to brotherly kindness. You better remember one thing too. Because like I told you, there was a brother came through one time. Brother Moat was preaching on the statue of a perfect man. And he, he was telling the brother. And the brother said, don't tell me. Let me figure it all out. And I'll come back and preach it. Six months later, he came back. I ain't joking, you know. Six months later, he came back. And he preached because of a quote that he had. Brother Branham says, the brotherly kindness age is takes the rapture. Now, this is a minister. And I'm th not throwing off on God help me. I'm just telling it like it is to make it sensible to you. You know what he preached? What does the word Philadelphia mean? What does the word Philadelphia mean? Brotherly love, right? The city of brotherly love is Philadelphia. What is it? Pennsylvania? Is that the word? The, what, what state is it in? Brotherly love. And so he preached that if, if brotherly love was where it's at, then rapture is going to take place in the sixth church age. They spent six months studying that. I happen to remember that a brother two spent three days studying on Daniel 70 weeks and made his own drawing. <laughs> he wasn't the other guy that made it, but he followed right with him. Yeah. Why, you want to make another one? Brother Branham already drawed it. That's right. mm -hmm. But listen, what is he saying? Brotherly kindness. Now, that's a good one right there. The sixth. Seventh. See. All right. Adding brotherly kindness. All right. When you get to that brotherly kindness, put yourself in his place on the matter. Now, you say, now, watch what I'm getting at. You come up to, to godliness before you're required to be perfect. You come to godliness before it's required that you be like God. You come to godliness and perfection 
before you come to brotherly kindness. So it's not brotherly kindness of Philadelphia. Well, that's just a good old brother. He just never says anything about anybody. He's a wonderful old brother, ain't he? Nature given, Brother Brown said. That's what he says. But look, what is brotherly kindness? All right, brotherly kindness, all right? When you get to that brotherly kindness, put yourself in his place on the matter. Now, how many ever done that? You differ with somebody. Have you ever put yourself in their place? Have you ever thought about, oh, Brother Perry Green made a statement years ago. He said, don't say nothing about somebody, because he's quoting Brother Brown, until you walked in his shoes. And that just stuck with me, you know. You realize that I'm talking to people out on the Internet, probably, that have never heard that you need these virtues because their pastors never taught them that. Well, what can they understand about what we're talking about? But just remember, they've never heard it. Oh, that gets me good. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm human. I'm sorry. But how many times have I ever said it this way? Takes you six months for me to pound into you that you need to get baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But the first person you see out on the street, your church is wrong. You ever been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? If you don't, you're going to die and go to hell. And you come back and you say, well, brother, you shouldn't have been that. Well, I got it to start with. When I first started, I got it. And I said, six months. It took me to get you in the water. But see, that's the way we think, isn't it? So is it with brotherly kindness? See? Well, I've got brotherly kindness. Huh? Have you got what the prophet calls it? When you get that brotherly kindness, you put yourself in his place. I don't see why y'all can't believe that. I've, I've believed it a long time. Put yourself in his place. Come on, we're going to read, right? Hope we get it. My brother sinned against me. Said, Peter, shall I forgive him? He said, seven times a day. That's wonderful. I need to quote scripture back to the Lord Jesus. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said 70 times seven. That's 490. That's why you're Daniel 70 weeks has the 490 years to it. That's why all of that is in there. Because Jesus said four, 70 times seven, that's 490. Now, he also adds right in there, if you know, he said, and again, if you ask you. That's the best way Brother Random had of defining it. 70 times seven is 490. And again, if you ask it. Well, I'm up to it now. One more time. <laughs> One more time. And then, no, he said, again, if you ask you. Uh, brotherly kindness. And you see, if a brother is all out of tune, don't be impatient with him, see. No, see. Be kind to him. Go anyhow. Bless God. If you don't agree with me, you ain't nothing to do with it. Where would I be if I'd have said that years ago? And I know you don't like the rest of it. Where would you be? I told you one time, God told me, he said, you can do in a certain situation. He said, anytime you want to. And I've never done that yet. Well, if he tells me I can do it, I'll just go do it. There was a lot involved. And I didn't do it. Brotherly kindness. Brothers all out of tune. Don't be impatient with him. See, be kind to him. Go anyhow. Go on up to the next. Uh, let's see. Where did we get to? What number are we on? I've done lost it. Okay. We go roll it up to work. We, we can obtain. Now watch him. We can obtain brotherly kindness and feeling for one another. Now watch him. Because this will relate to the headstone. Watch the statement he makes. We can obtain brotherly kindness and feeling for one another. 
see, but to maintain it in a group of people. There's some of you that won't even speak to the other person. Because you know what? Because they ain't spoke to you. They didn't speak to me and I'll speak to him. Oh, that's wonderful. What are the kindness? Right? We go to some of these meetings. And there's a lot of brothers in those meetings that wouldn't walk across the street to shake my hand. But I go to every one of them and I grab them and I hug their neck. I guess I'm called a hugger in the message. Because I go to them and I hug their neck and I say, brother, I love you. Like I was telling them last night, a certain brother in this message, I won't call his name of the church either, but he was wrong. And I went to him and told him he was wrong. And he got offended with me. And I went back and I said, brother, I'm sorry. I believe what I told you is the truth, but I'm sorry that I hurt your feelings over this matter. He got up in front of a congregation one day and he said to thank a man that would tell me I was wrong and show me I was wrong, but said yet he would apologize for talking to me. I didn't have no problem with that. I don't have no problem with saying I'm sorry. I ain't saying I'm sorry if I'm right. Remember, may I quote Brother Perry Green as a quote, okay? Because he said, Brother Branham said it, and I believe it. He said he was talking to Brother Branham one day, and he said, Brother Branham told him, said, Brother Perry, he said, from where you stand, he said, to where I stand, he said, everything you do is sin. Now, some of you may have heard him because I'm 99% sure he said in Atlanta. But he said, Brother Branham said, but from where I stand to where God is, everything I do is sin. I believe that. Whether it ever happened or not, I believe it. Not because so-and-so said so-and-so. No, because it's the truth. Just remember, when you're looking down on somebody, there's always somebody looking down on you. Never forget that. Might change your thoughts. All right. Go ahead. Pull it back up. Where are we? Why do you care for that brother? Because you broke bread with him here at the altar, as you will tonight. Your fellowship with him. You shook his hands. You worshiped with him. He's your brother. Wade and I were in Jamaica when a certain brother passed away. I regretted that so much. If there was any possibility, I asked him, was there any possibility for me to go get a flight home? And they said, doubtful that he wouldn't be able to get you home. I wanted to go to the man's funeral. I was not able to. I regret that. To this day, I regret that. Huh? Because you broke bread with him at the altar. You will tonight. You fellowship with him. You shook his hands. You worship with him. He's your brother. And he might do something in the flesh that you would disagree with because you're just kind of stay, which you oughtn't to do, but shun him a little. You ever been that way? You ever been to where, you know, you just kind of, well, you, you just kind of, you know, want to get around. When I see that, and I see them brothers and sisters don't want to shake my hand. You're going to shake my hand. I'm going to run you down. Right? Well, that's being arrogant. Okay. What are you? If that's being arrogant, we got that problem. What's yours for not wanting to do it? Okay. No problem. What you ought to do, but shun him a little. But in the bottom of your heart, if something happened to that brother, it would just nearly kill you or that sister. He said, I'm an old man. I was young and old. I've seen it down to the age do that. Hear people say, I just won't have any, won't have no more to do with him. And something happened to that man. It nearly kills him. He thinks, oh God, I let my precious brother go without making friends with him. You see, 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 it's brotherly love. It looks like it won't stick, 
but it does. The honey sticks. Okay. What's he talking about? The honey sticks. It won't, but the honey sticks. Go ahead to the next one because I've lost my page. I'm <laughs> supposed to be reading to you. On. This is from the message why I'm against organized religion. See, if what is purposed to the church, the life that was in Christ isn't reflecting in you, don't you stand still until you stand still if you haven't got patience, virtue, all of these things and temperance and things and godliness and brotherly kindness, all these things that's required of you. What would you be if you were like Brother Branham? You ever thought about that? He said, stand there in that person, hug your neck and say, I love you. He said, feel a knife sticking in your back. I don't want to know that. Boy, I'd like to know how many in church really loves me. I don't want to know nothing about that. I want to think everybody does. No. Come on. Look. And godliness, brotherly kind, and all these things, that's required of you. Requirement means, remember I gave you the thing where it's a commission. These virtues is a commission or a commandment from God. I gave it to you the other day out of Statue of Perfect Man. No matter what you've done, no matter how much you've shouted, how many churches you've joined, how many feathers you've pinned into yourself, don't do it. Wait till genuinely from your heart. You can forgive till in your heart you have brotherly kindness. No matter if they pull a handful of beard from one side, you turn the other cheek with sweetness, see? Until those virtues, no matter what, they say to you, no matter what. Listen. All right. What is he going on to? I don't have time, so let me preach just a little bit, okay? And, and you know it's there because I'll do the best I can quoting for they can pull this up and let you do it. Uh, Brother Branham, in speaking on a message right after the Statue of Perfect Man, which is uh, two or three days later, he preaches a message called Blasphemous Names. And in that message, he begins with telling a dream that her sister had and that she was worried whether she had the Holy Ghost or not. And as she was concerned about those things, she laid down on her dear folder of thing. She had a dream. She goes to Brother Branham, tells him the dream, you know, writes a letter, I think, to him. And then he refers back to it when he gets to this message, you know, and refers back to her and the dream. You know, now he says in here, he said, I don't have the paper she wrote it on. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a little bit beyond that, and I hope you are. Because Brother Brown says, when you tell a prophet a dream, he says he sees the dream. He'll say, you'll say, so and so and so. And he'll say, why did you leave this out? He said he sees the dream. Well, he's telling the sister about the dream. And she saw this place upon a mountain, or like upon a thing, and she sees a rock box sitting in the top of the mountain. And this is not Junior Jackson's dream. We'll get to that one on later, all right, if we have time. All right. And he's covering this that it's a rock box sitting in the top of the mountain. He covers that every church age has a rock box. That dream was, a, he said, it is a spiritual dream. He said it identically goes with the message he preached of the stature of a perfect man. Right. All right. So then they go together to make the same point. So read them together. All right. So in that mean, he got to it and he says that when he saw that, he said, this man was standing there and said he had this thing and he was holding water and he poured over in to this rock box. And he said it was boiling out all of the trash and it was running out. He says that water was the Holy Spirit. And he goes on to say that that was the Holy Spirit and nothing will hold it. He said, nothing will hold the Holy Spirit. He said, you don't put it in churches. You put it in individuals. He said, because it'll run out. All right. He says, then he, the man went and got, she was concerned about because it was boiling over. The man went and got some honey and poured it into the rock box. And he said, that honey represents brotherly kindness. 
See, now, so none of these others would hold on. Even though you come up to a great godliness, they won't hold on to that point. But when it comes to that little rock box, he said that honey represented the whole, represented brotherly kindness, and he said it held. He said it looked like it wasn't, but said it held together. He said that's brotherly kindness, the age that you're living in. All right? See, then, because it's a restoration. Now, listen. So, therefore, the rock, the latter-day Pentecostal church, which has received, this is paragraph 121 of Blasphemous Night, received the Holy Spirit. They did at the first, all down through the ages, they received the Holy Spirit, but not in the measure that they have it now, because it's a restoration of the first. All right? See, so it's been the Holy Ghost in every age. And that Holy Ghost, it is the Word. He said it was the messenger. Now I'm jumping a whole lot. But the messenger to the church, paragraph 123, 24 of blasphemous names, the messenger to the church, pouring the message into the church. What was the water that was being poured into that? The message. This message is to boil out all of our unbelief. See? He said, I just got to telling you of brotherly kindness, the age we live in now. All right? See, then when it does, he poured out onto that church in its brotherly kindness to honey. Now we pick up this evening a little more on it, tying together with Brother Jackson's dream that he has that Brother Random verifies. Because listen, I ain't just quoting to you. You can do what you want to. Let's see. He says, paragraph 114 of Blasphemous Nine. Now, here is the interpretation of her dream. The rock box. Water was boiling out, the message, boiling out all the trash. Then you add brotherly kindness, brotherly love. Said it looked like it was going to swell and bust, but said it didn't. Said it held. Well, see, that's a very important thing for the hour to think about. That the brotherly kindness of this messenger pouring the message in will bring that brotherly kindness into being. To where it'll hold. You got a lot more. You go through blasphemous names. You go through it. It's what? He's talking about the rock box confession. The Holy Ghost, he said, can be preached in these places. But that's good or bad, he said, because you've got renegades, you've got everything. Therefore, the rock, this Latter-day Pentecostal church, the bride of Jesus Christ, there's a brotherly kindness that's expected in you and I. He said, why would you go, Brother Branham? He realized that he would go a lot of times and preach when he knew the people there only had him for the signs and the wonders. They only had him for showing the gifts. They didn't believe what he said. What about the 300 ministers that he went and talked to about baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? He said they all wanted tapes. He said we never sent a one. None of them ever got tapes and things. But did Brother Branham quit going? No. He went. What do you call it? Brotherly kindness. The brotherly kindness would come to a position that God would require this brotherly kindness before he would cap off the whole thing. That brotherly kindness would be the honey that would be. Now, sure, there's honey in the rock, my brother. We talk about brotherly kindness. He said, we, we can have brotherly kindness. Yes, because, see, some people have brotherly kindness one to the other. But he said, as a group. This Lula, what about it? This, this little group. Brotherly kindness. No, we can be, we can be, we can be, we can Facebook. Amen. Facebook telephone. <laughs> right. I don't have no Facebook. We just taking prayer requests. 
when you're sitting there yakking about somebody, when the prophet said, don't do that, he said, pray for him. Brother Dale, just as guilty as anybody, but you know for certain the Facebooks don't work. And you know for certain the telephone don't work too good because I feel so bad a lot of times because people will call me and Peggy will say later, said, well, what did they call you about? I said, I don't know. They didn't tell me. And I didn't ask them. You come into my office, don't come in there and want to tell the tales about this. We go get the other person. Okay? We go get the other person. I've been in there, right? A lot of you know that, right? I don't go in there by myself. Some of you sitting here have been in my office. Yours back when something would come up and I'd take you in the office and say, okay, but we're going to have a witness. We're going to have somebody else sitting here. We're not going to talk about this, and you better be ready to prove what you're talking about. Because I told one brother in the office in front of everybody else, I said, because of your past record, I do not believe you are saying the truth. I've got to be plain. Right? I'm the pastor. I've got to be plain. Not arrogant, plain. He said, I want to tell you about so-and-so. Come on, folks. We've had some leave because we didn't go along with their yakky 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 about everybody. But did that stop them yakky 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 about it? No. They still yakky yakky. They still call you. Just remember what I'm saying. If you sit there and listen to somebody yakky yak, you are just as guilty as the person that has called you. And you say, well, I didn't do nothing wrong. I just listened. Why didn't you say, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Remember, that's my brother. That's my sister you're talking about. Come and tell me. One lady told me one day, boy, she was chewing me out, called me up, chewing me out about a certain thing. I said, ma'am, are you willing to face that person that you're just saying that about? They're kind of quiet. I said, because if you don't, don't talk to me about it. If you're willing, we'll go right now and meet that person and we'll talk about it. But you better be ready to talk. But if not, shut it up. That's why my phone doesn't ring all the time, but a lot of yours do. Yeah. Have you ever done this? Somebody says, now, here's what Brother Brown said. I can find these quotes if you want. He said, somebody comes to you and tells you about somebody. He said, let's pray. For, have you prayed for the brother? Maybe I better put it that way to get it exact. He said, have you prayed for the brother or sister? Well, what should we first do? Wouldn't that put Facebook on really good? You turn it on over the morning, it says up the top, don't say nothing until you pray. Ah, come on, folks. Somebody calls you up and starts talking to say. We're not, we're, let's pray. Let's pray. Yeah, but, but, but uh, that's not the definition of brotherly kindness that I've got. Well, that's the Holy Ghost definition. Right. Now you tell me it ain't. I just read to you, and there's a lot more Brother Run says about brotherly kindness. We'll use it in another message on down the road. Because remember, you're going to have brotherly kindness. Then the Holy Spirit will come down and seal you. That's why there's not a lot of sealing. And I don't see why God let this run like that. To try us. Come on, brother. Come on, musician. To try us to see what we'll do. To see... If we'll stay with the word. Well, you just don't leave me no good. I, I, I just have a good time on the phone talking. I, I'm not gossiping. I'm not gossiping. I'm, I, I'm just taking prayer request. That's good. Ain't it? No, I'm, just, I'm just taking prayer request. We need to pray for this sister. And that's what I do. People come up here to be prayed for, it's cut off. 
right? You don't hear what that person asked me to pray for. It's click back on as quick as I start praying. That's on the internet. That's on the videos. That's on all of it. I'll stand right here and listen to you. It's totally off. Why? I wonder what they're praying about. But, 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 but Brother Dale, I need to know what they're praying about where I can pray. Oh, wonderful. You're wanting to gossip. Mm. Well, you don't have no brotherly kindness. <laughs> okay. And I don't have much temperance either. <laughs> no problems. Right? But is it true? Yeah. Okay. What we got, brother? Oh, excuse me. One, Wrong side. Yeah. Anybody have a need? The altar's open. Oh, my brother. Brother, the kindness. Let's stand together. Take him as the example. He's the rock of you. Have you tasted that the Lord is gracious? Do you walk in the way that's new? Have you drank from the living fountain? There's honey in the rock for you. Had a toothache for two. Oh, there's honey in the rock, my brother. There's honey in the rock for you. Had a toothache, then you can sympathize, right? Father, There's our brother's got a toothache problem. His father, for you. So we ask you to take away the pain. Do you pray We've seen it before. You can you make people a brand new set of teeth. You can do anything you want to. We don't know what to ask. We don't know what to ask for. Never but we know one thing to ask for. Take away the pain. Take away the pain from this. In the name of Jesus Christ, we condemn the pain. Thank you, Father. Oh, there's honey in the rock, my Anybody brother. Just come and let's see. There's honey in the rock for you. Leave your sins for the blood to cover. There's honey in the rock for you. Then go out through the streets and my ways. Preach the word to the many or few. Say to every fallen brother, there's honey in the rock just have a for name. you. Oh, there's honey in the rock, my brother. There's honey in the rock for you. Put yourself the in the place of the person. Makes a lot of change, don't it? Father, we thank you for today, and we just ask you to go with us as we eat a natural meal. Bring us back together in you, Lord. We love you, and we thank you. We ask you to just bless us together in all, Lord, the healing, the signs, and all. And, Father, we need rain, so we're asking you to send rain. And we speak it to the point of saying, Lord, we believe you, so now you make it manifest to send rain among us and cool down all of this doing, Lord, and we thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You dismiss. There. Mm. Oh, there's honey in the rock, my brother. There's honey in the rock for you. Leave your sins for the blood to cover. There's honey in the rock for you. Then go out through the streets and by way. Preach the word to the many or few. Say to every fallen brother, there's honey in the rock for you. Oh, there's honey in the rock 
my brother.